it's the end of the year and I won't see you probably until January 2nd. Yeah. After you've made your New Year's resolutions. Right. And one thing, I don't want to I don't want to pick on you. Okay. But I think one thing that I hope you've learned this year. Okay. That if you want to make friends with people, mm. you've got to, well, I mean, look, if you want, like, I know that, like, you, you want to be, you know, you work in here, you want to, like, you know, you want to resonate with people. When people offer you, like, you know, some friendly, like, when they reach out to you. Right. And they say, like. They put themselves out there. They put themselves out there and they expose themselves and they make themselves vulnerable to you. And they say, like, hey, why not hang out with us? Mm -hmm. the boys right right like or yeah. why not have like let me you know come check out like you know like you should see what i got in the back it's really cool like you know like yeah, yeah, i yeah. want you to like they're trying to reach out to you and they're being vulnerable and or they'll say like hey let me treat you to some sush right some sushi yeah right if you say no, you're making, you're going to hurt their feelings and they'll forget about you. She yeah. was offered a tour, sushi and poker with the boys. You're right. Like poker. I didn't, up to, I didn't open myself up to the possibility of new friends. And this is what happens. Okay. Uh, here's uh, Tim Pool uh, interviewing uh, Marianne Williamson. Also, we, uh, well, I got some issues about with his uh, story here about um, uh, the, the book, but let's hear this. I, I want to hear this. And I would show up at the school board as well. So, so I, the reason why I bring up these, these are very specific examples. Uh, this book is gay. Uh, we have this story from uh, ABC. Parents call cops after teacher offers this book is gay to middle schoolers in Illinois. This book provides instruction on uh, for the use of uh, gay dating apps for anonymous sex. And these are middle schoolers. These are, these are 10, 11, and 12-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So the parents finding out that the teacher was doing this, I mean, that's that's pedophilia. That's that's grooming behavior. That, that, that is outright egregious and illegal. When, I, I don't even want to say conservatives, but it seems to be the case when, uh, let's say someone like me, I'm from Chicago, and I grew up with a Democrat family. When I find out that adults are providing children this kind of stuff, I say, that's a bad thing. We shouldn't allow that. However, for some reason, I end up with, uh, we had the woman, um, what was her name from the, the majority report? Emma Vigland. Emma Vigland came on and actually defended that these books be kept in middle schools. No, I would not agree with Emma Vigland. Yeah, I think so, she hadn't read the books when she made that statement. I could be but, wrong. So, so, so this, is the, this is the culture war issue. I, I, and the reason why I bring it up is I often find that people who would align themselves as more Democrat or left-leaning are not familiar with the books in question that are being challenged by parents. And so you end up with these stories that are not correct. They'll say something like, you know, oh, to kill a mockingbird. And it's like, I, 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 I'm not I'm not concerned at all about ideas and philosophy. You know, I think critical race theory as a philosophy, it can be taught in schools. But as uh, as praxis, I don't yeah. think that's appropriate. So the criticism became with Florida. It, it's not that they had books on critical race theory. It's that they had critical race praxis in books, which so what are you calling critical race practice praxis? So, uh, for instance, there is a uh, what was one example we had? Um, yeah. What was one example? I forgot the woman's name. Uh, was it Asra Nomani? Yeah. That was her name. Mm -hmm. One of the a lot of the books that they were bringing into Florida would say something like, you know, we have the classic math problem where it says a train leaves Cincinnati traveling 50 miles okay, an hour. All right. We don't need this anymore. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you something. The uh, now, first off, I don't think uh, Tim should be allowed to actually even mention your name anymore. Like, I think like, uh, you know, I mean, he'd said it like four, five, six, seven times in the segment after I left, after I said I didn't want to hang out, um, accusing me of wanting to have sex with children. And he said my full name a few times then after I'd left. Um, but it's he, just interesting. I mean, you know, so, so people try, listen, they posture on camera. I get it. And it's, 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 you it, think it's posturing on camera and that's a, that's a, that is a very possible answer mm -hmm. to me. I think it's just that you hurt his feelings so badly that, um, he felt, uh, first off you humiliated him when you, he interviewed you. Okay. A little bit. Which was a little bit mean. 
I, I think, mm -hmm. to him, because it's like literally like picking on a junior high student. Um, emotionally. Emotionally. Um, I mean, yes. He, he, Intellectually he close to that as well. Uh, but you, you hurt his feelings when you wouldn't play poker and have sushi with the boys. And, uh, and, and I think it, it's hard for him to, I think he's, it's not so much that he forgot your name. I think he's blocked it out. I think that's what that's it possible. is. That's um, possible. But I will say this also. There is no 10-year-old in eighth grade. The teacher taught eighth graders. That's where the book is. The book is not assigned. And Tim may not realize this. Uh, but when a book is in a middle school, that doesn't mean that the sixth graders, the seventh graders, the eighth graders or the ninth graders, because, you know, junior high up in Massachusetts was seven through nine and in New York, I know it's six through eight. They're not all assigned the same books. People are, just, are assigned books that are age appropriate. When you're in eighth grade, unless you have skipped multiple um, years, you're not 10, you're not 11, you're not 12. Um, there is no eighth. I mean, I guess it's conceivable that somebody could skip this. I mean, we've had people who are 14 in college, but the overwhelming number of people in eighth grade are 13, 14, or 15. And the idea that for people at that age not to know their sexuality, this is not a handbook on how to get, um, uh, anonymous sex on an app nope it is um it is about basically telling people like who may not have any support at home who may have been ostracized i mean i imagine the book is not uh you know is a, a little bit older than today but um to normalize the fact that they are gay the idea that you wouldn't have sex ed for 13 or 14 year old students is absurd in fact sex education by the national standards starts earlier than when this book would have been assigned oh my gosh in new and, york in new york city yeah. the uh, former uh, doe um uh, head of sex ed was was basically he's like you got to tell some stuff to kids when they're six well i said to him in that interview as well um at the time that you know, the more children learn about what's appropriate and what's not sexually, especially at the age of middle school, the less likely they are to be groomed and sexually abused. And I asked him to contend with that. And he moved well, on. Let me say this. He is now, obviously, I think like you, we, we talk about stuff that we're not uh, experts on mm -hmm. every day. Um, but we try and interview people about it much of the stuff that we talk about is simply stuff that we've learned in interviews maybe stuff that we have read but show me one sex ed teacher in the country that thinks that book is in a pro uh, that is that is an actual sexual education teacher mm -hmm. and believes that sex ed should be given to students because there's a lot of like cr christian fundamentalists and other type of fundamentalists who believe that their kids should not have any sex education whatsoever they also think that they should not get the hpv vaccine because it's going to make them more sexually promiscuous but show me one sex ed teacher in the country who thinks it's inappropriate for 14 year olds to read that book particularly ones who are gay because this teacher was getting a lot of questions about this stuff and realized there was a need show me um one parent who believes in sex ed that should be given to student you know their kids by the time that they're 12 which is way late incidentally that would have an issue with this he doesn't know anything of what he's talking about He's just espousing this, the, you know, fundamentalist version and vision of yeah. stuff and just spewing it out. And, you know, Marianne Williamson should also know 14 year olds 
should be reading that book. Oh, absolutely. And then, yes, he's right that uh, the specifics of the prop that he showed me at the time, I was not fully aware of that book. Um, but as we say, that's not really our job. That's the job of experts who understand when it is appropriate to teach these kinds of students. And there is really very little controversy except from fundamentalists and parents who have religious inclinations. Um, there, there's no controversy about these kinds of books being shown based on people who are actually um, uh, it, who, who have the ability to make these kinds of assertions because it's their professional life. Like yep. they are supposed to be teaching kids sex ed. And uh, I defer to them. I defer to experts on this matter. But, you know, seems like Tim doesn't.